For more on this, we are joined by Tom Gross, a British political analyst. Now, thank you, Tom. Big question for you right now. Everyone's pointing the finger at Rishi Sunak, but Rishi Sunak lost a popularity contrast to Liz Truss, which means does the Tory party have anybody left in their roster that might actually last any longer? Well, they're swirling with rumors. Right now, Boris Johnson, who only left office 45 days ago, is being tipped to make a comeback within the next few days, um, which would be incredible, really, since he was very unpopular among his own MPs, which is why he resigned. Um, but I just want to say one thing in advance of this about Liz Truss. Um, I am not a supporter of Liz Truss, but I think she's been treated very unfairly. And in fact, you know, it's it's so unstable. She should have been given more time. In her 45 days in office, about two weeks of that was subsumed with, you know, Queen Elizabeth II dying and planning 10 days of mourning and so on. So in a way, she's only had about a month to govern. Admittedly, she's made mistakes, but uh, she won fair and square under the Conservative Party leadership rules. And even though I'm not a supporter, she should be given a chance to govern. It's a little bit like opponents of Donald Trump in 2016 in America saying that he was illegitimately elected. He was given a chance to govern. And in 2020, Joe Biden was legitimately elected and no one should have doubted that. So in the same way, Liz Truss hasn't lost a vote in Parliament. She's literally been hounded out of, out of office by supporters of Rishi Sunak and also supporters of Boris Johnson, both of whom want to have their man in office instead. So I think it's it's very unstable and, and it's not good for Britain or for democracy. I mean, we've seen this is not just unique to the Tory party, though. It seems that both of the front-running parties in British politics lately have had massive upsets in the stability of their parties. They've been hollowed out from the inside. I mean, look at the labor movement with Jeremy Corbyn, who got hounded out of his party by scandal after scandal, and the infighting that happened there. It's now being mirrored in the, polit in the Tory party with massive infighting. Is there any island of stability left at all in the sea of British politics? Well, not really. I mean, the Labour Party under their new leader, Keir Starmer, um, Keir Starmer has restored a degree of stability after the turbulent Corbyn years, which is why he's very ahead in the opinion polls in Britain now, as uh, even people who've never voted Labour feel that he could make a, a stable prime minister. Um, so, you know, but the problem is the country's in a real mess economically. And, and behind all this, in my view and the view of many, is the decision to leave the European Union. It's not necessarily the leaving of the European Union in itself, Brexit. It's the fact that uh, the government hasn't really had a clear plan what to do or how to implement whatever advantages they want to get out of leaving the EU. So it's a big fault line in uh, Conservative Party politics in particular that underlines all this instability. And I don't think that's going to go away anytime soon. So one last question to help our viewers really understand. Now, many of our viewers are going to understand the politics and instability through the lens of Israeli instability. We've had five elections in four years with the mantra might as well being the elections will continue until morale improves. Is that really a good way of understanding things that are happening in England or is the political instability driven by very different factors? What's really leading to this and is there a way out? Well, yes, I think it is driven by different factors. And in Israel, at least there are elections, at least the general public uh, goes to the polls. And it's the public that seems to be deadlocked and can't really decide who should be in government, which is why in Israel, each election is so tight. In Britain, then we're not having general elections. The Conservative Party by themselves, which is constitutionally allowed, are simply switching prime ministers, not just prime ministers. We've had, we've had uh, three prime ministers in the last three months um, but we also we, we will we will have done by next week when there's a new one um, we've had four finance ministers and this isn't a way to govern a country I should also add that Israel has always been a bit turbulent Israel you know has many external enemies Israel is a in a way still a developing country and therefore the turbulence in Israel is not surprising especially under the uh, you know um, system of voting 
everything and so many parties in Parliament. Britain, by contrast, is the mother of democracy. It's the most stable country in Europe. It never had a revolution in modern times. It never had communism or fascism. Britain is the one country people look to with maybe the United States as a kind of stable democracy, much more stable historically than Germany or France or Italy. So it, it is quite surprising that Britain, of all countries, possibly the most stable large country in Europe, um, should be in such turmoil. And there isn't really a way out. I mean, Boris Johnson may possibly make a comeback, but all the problems around him will continue to exist. So even if he's uh, re-elected by his own party, there's still a lot of people who, who think he, he may be good at winning elections, but he's not good at governing the country. And it, it looks very chaotic in Britain. And it's a different instability from Israel, but it is it is not a good one in Britain, no. It's definitely an interesting way of seeing things. Thank you very much, Tom, for that uh, analysis of developments, which will obviously need to be followed up on as they progress.